Few weapons on the 21st century battlefield are as effective as the modern sniper. On any battlefield, a proficient sniper has got the capability to change the tide of that battle. Now fielded by every branch of the U.S. Armed Forces, from the Army to the Marines, Coast Guard, and Navy, these elite warriors continue to prove their value in modern conflicts. No shot is the same shot, so you have to be prepared for every shot. This four-part series looks at how the role of the sniper, their tactics and technology, are changing to effectively combat everything from insurgents to pirates and tribal warlords. You can't just stamp out a sniper. These professionals are highly trained, infinitely adaptable, and amazingly precise. They are today's modern sniper. For over 225 years, the Coast Guard has been saving lives and protecting U.S. coastlines. This highly adaptable branch of the U.S. Armed Forces fills roles in search and rescue, law enforcement, military, and homeland security, all with only slightly more members than the New York City Police Department. With the launch of the War on Drugs, the Coast Guard intensified its counter-drug activities and utilized its assets throughout the Caribbean and Pacific Ocean to help slow the flow of drugs into the United States. To aid in this mission, the Coast Guard has recently implemented an unprecedented tactic that has led to incredible success. They use airborne precision marksmen from the helicopter interdiction tactical squadron known as HITRON. These highly trained marksmen account for 10% of drugs seized in the United States. And though they have fired thousands of rounds on missions, their targets are not human. Instead, the gunners fire their weapons with surgical precision to disable the engines of drug running boats. This new tactic has proven incredibly successful and is now one of the most effective means for stopping drugs from reaching U.S. soil. When we train and qualify our personnel, we're saying that, that our gunners can hit an engine block, which is about 16 inches by 16 inches. We're gonna hit that every single time, and we're not gonna we're not gonna unduly endanger the occupants of that vessel. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's riding, you know, how fast it's going, where it's maneuvering. We're gonna put our aircraft and that gunner in a position to safely and effectively take that shot. The Coast Guard's tactics and technology have evolved to a level of sophistication rivaling those of the world's most modern military units allowing them to take down smugglers with the least amount of force possible. But smugglers continue to up the ante with methods of eluding Coast Guard assets to deliver their products to U.S. soil. With a war on drugs in full swing, the new breed of smugglers, known as narco-terrorists, have begun using a variety of methods to get the product from South America to U.S. coastlines. It is a constant cat and mouse game between the, the drug smuggling cartels and, and, and obviously the forces that are out there to try to stop those people and, and that flow of drug traffic. So there, there's been many different avenues, obviously. Try to do it via air and, and that has not been successful. And, you know, bringing it up over land is always going to happen. It's going to come through Mexico. But the, the one prevailing is that the maritime transport avenue is probably still the best overall way to transport drugs. And when transporting drugs by sea, Narco-terrorists have found their most effective method is to use specialized high-speed boats named for their primary function. What really defines a go-fast is something with ample space to have a lot of storage. An open-hold vessel that goes, you know, fast, pretty fast with multiple engines, engines that exceed its normal, you know, what its normal usage would be. The problem was, once a go-fast was spotted, it was very difficult to stop it, and smugglers easily escaped from pursuing Coast Guard assets. Our deployed helicopter crews would often find these go-fast type vessels that fit the profile. You know, we were pretty sure they were smuggling drugs, and uh, we had no way to stop, and so they'd get away. We'd try and track them but uh, quite often they got away. There's no way a Coast Guard cutter is going to interdict them, even if they sighted them, they, they, they could outrun them. And the only way that we could make them stop is whether they beach themselves on the shore, they happen to run out of gas, but we just could not catch those vessels. You know, the genesis for hit drone was the need to, to stop those go-fasts and, and give the cutters a chance to interdict the go-fast. One method used in ship-to-ship -ship interdictions in the past was the use of disabling fire to the engine. The tactic proved highly effective on slow-moving vessels and allowed a cutter to use its weaponry to stop a ship without harming its crew. 
Of course, when dealing with boats that are two and three times faster than the cutter, this is impossible. But these methods were refined for airborne applications, and the Hitron test phase began. Uh, 1999 actually did the sort of the proof of concept. Assembled a group of 10 folks, six pilots, and four aviation gunners. Encountered five go fasts uh, in, during the test and evaluation phase, and they stopped all five. Prior to that period, the uh, cutters, their small boats, and our aircraft weren't able to uh, have even close to that success rate. With the helicopter being able to uh, shoot from it and be able to stop the engines, then they can stop it on scene without us being within 50, 60 miles of it. So that's a, that's a huge force multiplier that uh, bodes well for the Coast Guard and probably not as well for the illegal suspect. Of course, for a branch of the military who's best known for saving lives, a lot of controversy arose over the idea of arming helicopters. Firing weapons and firing weapons out of aircraft um, doesn't sit well with everybody. Everything we do has to fit a set profile, and we have a protocol that we follow to the T, because if we're successful, everything we do will end up in federal court. Those early Hitron pilots and gunners interdicted a total of 2,640 pounds of cocaine and 7,000 pounds of marijuana, together worth over $100 million. After their success, any naysayers with the Coast Guard were quickly silenced, and in 1999, Hitron made its first successful interdictions. The majority of what we see is cocaine, and uh, since inception, 358,000 pounds of cocaine. We've been very successful, and uh, as a matter of fact, this past fiscal year, we've just achieved uh, our 31st interdiction, 31st bust, which makes that the most successful year on record for Hitron. Who are you going to call? Coke Yeah! <laughs> The final phase of acceptance for Hitron came after the tragedies of 9-11. When the Coast Guard became a part of the newly formed Homeland Security Department, the capability to stop marine threats in sensitive areas, like the attack on the USS Cole, fit perfectly in the new role that the Coast Guard was asked to play in keeping America safe. Well, Hitron was relatively young uh, when 9-11 happened. But we had started doing counter-drug interdiction. Obviously, Homeland Security is, is an easy follow-on to that because we already were flying, flying aircraft uh, with weapons on them, you know, had, had folks that, personnel that were, that were proficient in doing those types of things. So the natural progression was to us to also be able to do Homeland Security missions around, around the United States. Well, I think the whole uh, mentality of the Coast Guard's changed. Certainly, its missions have changed. Uh, I joined in 1980. Back in that era, the vast majority of the Coast Guard uh, personnel joined to be lifesavers. Uh, search and rescue was, uh, was, was mission number one. And we have, since that day, gained many, many missions that we never thought we would have. We're not just stopping drugs out there. We're also potentially stopping people coming into the United States, trying to get to the United States, that could be terrorists. You really check who the people are that are coming on board your vessels. Once you make an interdiction, you're really looking at who these people are, taking their names down, and making sure they're not some, some terrorist entity or group trying to get into the United States. There are lots and lots and lots of, of missions uh, w within the Coast Guard skill set. Um, Homeland Defense, Homeland Security have become a, a larger mission since, since post 9 11. Today, Hitron maintains its operational headquarters at Cecil Field in Jacksonville, Florida. They are located between Customs and National Guard hangars which is a fitting location for a unit that plays a role in both law enforcement and homeland security. Hitron today is made up of some of the finest men and women in the Coast Guard who perform a multitude of jobs to keep the unit functioning at its best. There's currently uh, about 230 personnel assigned to, to Helicopter Interdiction Tactical Squadron Jacksonville. It's really here at this unit, it's, it's primarily broken down into, into, into three things. The aircraft and the, main, the folks maintaining the aircraft, the weapons and the personnel maintaining those, those weapons, and the boats and the people that drive and maintain those boats. Those all come together uh, so that the pilots and air crew can then get into those aircraft and go train on the exact mission that we're going out to fly. Coming up on Modern Sniper Coast Guard, gunner training. We have several different training scenarios. Not everyone's a good shot. If they can't adapt pretty quick, we need to find someone else. And later, Hitron gunners go offshore to put their training to the test. The towboat simulates a go-fast boat that's not in compliance. 
Hold position. Come in, Roger, 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 The Coast Guard has entered a new chapter in their history of keeping America safe. They have begun arming helicopters to stop unwelcome vessels from reaching our shores. Whether the boats are carrying drugs or terrorist weapons, these brave men and women risk dangerous conditions to make precision shots into the boat's engines to stop the enemy dead in the water. This unit is just about singularly focused, you know, on the, on the airborne use of force for smuggling. The aviation use of force capability that we have here, uh, that's, that's the biggest change in the aviation world in the Coast Guard. We're not primarily here for lethal employment of our weapons. We're here to use precision fire to get a, a smuggler to, to stop their boat uh, when they won't stop otherwise. But taking shots on occupied vessels requires an amazing amount of skill by a gunner. And here at Hitron, Gunner training never stops. I think that here you'll see that there's a lot of motivated people. I mean, the gunners here, are, they're working day in and day out. Every possible chance you need to be shooting. You own each one of your bullets. You will hit your target every time. That's, that's what we train for our gunners. If you're not out fighting the fight, you're training. Hitron gunners are selected based on stringent criteria. To date, every smuggling vessel detected by a Hitron aircrew has been successfully engaged. In order to keep this perfect record, only the best and the brightest are chosen for this demanding position. Not everyone's a good shot. And if they're not, I don't want to say a natural, if they can't adapt pretty quick and qualify pretty quick, we found that uh, we need to find someone else. Gunner training first begins on the ground, on flat ranges, where the gunners familiarize themselves with their primary weapons, starting with the Barrett M107. The primary weapon we utilize for our interdictions during disabling fire here at Hitron is the Barrett Firearms M107. It is a 50 caliber, short recoil operated, box fed weapon. It is normally a sniper weapon, but here for its anti-material aspects. Uh, if you're shooting a small round through the engine, our tests have shown that it will stop the engine. It will just take uh, many more rounds than what a 50 caliber uh, will take. Due to the uh, nature of our operations, a precision rifle is, is required for disabling fire and the power and the punch that the 107 provides ensures and guarantees a gunner that each round that strikes an outboard motor disables that motor immediately. Though most shots taken by the Coast Guard are relatively short, the incredible power of the 50 caliber cartridge is devastating on marine engines. It's, it's an emotional moment the first time you hear that thing go off in the cabin. Um, it's definitely something you'll never forget for the rest of your life. The power behind that weapon and what we're doing with that weapon makes this job what it is. As a backup weapon to the 50 and to aid in other mission objectives, gunners also must master an upgraded version of a classic rifle. The M14 is a, is a very reliable and solid backup to the 50 caliber. This is the Coast Guard's M14T EBR for enhanced battle rifle. The receiver of the weapon is the very common M14 that everyone's used to. What the Coast Guard has done to it is put a Sage International stock, which allows multiple accessories attached. The M14 was first used during Vietnam, but is still in use today as a sniper weapon throughout the armed services due to its power, accuracy, and blistering rate of fire. To help improve the marksmanship capabilities with the weapon systems, gunners have the choice between two state-of-the-art optics, the Schmidt and Bender scope and the EOTech holographic sight. The EOTech sight is a battery-operated holographic sight. Basically, the gunner uh, can put his head behind the sight uh, and the hologram moves uh, and always stays centered on on what you're going to shoot. Uh, it works uh, for fast moving scenarios uh, where the boat is maneuvering towards or away from the helicopter. He can get on target very quickly, a lot faster than using a scope, and engage multiple times uh, before the target is lost. Some gunners prefer to use the Schmidt and Bender scope, uh, and they also prefer to be farther away uh, from the target than others. When the helicopter is farther away from the target, things seem to be moving a lot slower. And with a scope, a gunner can stay on target and put rounds on target uh, a, a lot easier. 
but not all weapons used by the gunner require an optic. Their most devastating tool is more of a point-and-shoot proposition. With a rate of fire of up to 950 rounds per minute, the 240 presents an awesome display of force. It does exactly what we want it to. It lets that TOI, a target of interest, know there is a law enforcement presence here and we want you to stop. The M240 is a machine gun. We use the M240 for warning rounds, and, uh, but that is a weapon of mass destruction. A shot from a moving helicopter is difficult to make even on a stationary target. When the target is moving, the compounding variables can make the shot seem impossible. So gunners must train to find their own techniques for hitting the target. There are so many different things that are involved before you take the shot. You've got the wind, you're shooting at a moving target, you're shooting at a moving target. You know, the, the moving target's in the water, so you've got up and down motion. We utilize uh, every fixed object in the door frame for support, and we also must maintain some flexibility to move ever so slightly to the left or right or up and down. Techniques for shooting from a helicopter vary, but the most successful method Hitron gunners have discovered is the use of the strap system attached to the hoist. Once you get into an upright position with the weapon on a strap, you have a little bit more mobility. You can push out, you can swing back in. It just allows for more movement throw off the straw and being able to move the weapon along with asking the MC to put the aircraft where we need it. Like a spotter to an army or marine sniper, the pilot acts as a critical component to any successful shot. The gunner and the pilot must develop a dialogue that allows them to work together seamlessly so that it is possible to get the gunner on target. Communication is imperative. Without communication, we wouldn't be able to do what we do effectively. Placing the gunner in the right position is a mix of altitude and lateral distance uh, to the target primarily. During an actual interdiction, the gunner will tell you, you know, whether you need to come further out. He tries to give himself the best shot. And so he will tell the pilots, it's pretty much the eyes of the pilots on where he wants them to be. And it goes back and forth and there's always constant communication. And, you know, we use the phrase accurate, bold, and concise. You know, instead of being wishy-washy, they said, you know, I need you to come 10 feet to the left or I need you to climb 20 feet. Forward 30. Coming forward. Roger, forward 20. It's very remarkable communication, and, and through the training, everybody knows kind of what's going to happen next. To polish the communication between gunner and pilot, and to give the gunner the opportunity to practice firing on a target moving dynamically, Hitron maintains a rigorous training schedule with their more sophisticated training assets, namely the tactical training boat. We have several different training scenarios that we work uh, with with the tactical training boat. One of the things that we do here at Hit Run, obviously, is, is go out to, to the St. John's River, which is very close, uh, with a tactical training boat, with an aircraft, with a crew. Essentially, me and the rest of the TTB crew here play bad guy on the river, train the pilots to be able to give it a stable platform from the aviation gunners. Our tactical training boat crew drive the boats like the drug runners drive the boats and, and test the pilots and the air crew, the coordination required to, to keep the aircraft, get the aircraft in position, maintain position so that the gunner can shoot. That's a very, very effective way to bring all of those things together as a team and actually execute the mission. Coming up on Modern Sniper Coast Guard. These engines are rated at 1,053 horsepower. Greatly assists us in keeping the aircraft in an upright and uh, out of water condition. When I took that first shot, it was, uh, it was very surreal. It was like, this is it. This is what you train for. The armed air unit of the Coast Guard, known as Hitron, has crews deployed throughout the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. But the heart of this new operation is based in a specialized hangar here at Cecil Field. The location is just minutes away from several key training areas and Navy bases. It is the perfect area to conduct the rigorous training for Hitron to stay proficient in their mission. It is here that dedicated guardians work tirelessly to meet the demanding deployment and training schedule. But most importantly, they ensure Hitron's helicopters are ready to fly and to handle the unique mission of Hitron and give gunners the most maneuverable and steady firing platform possible, they have selected a very special helicopter. 
We have uh, a number of helicopters here at Hitron, MH-65C Charlie aircraft, which are the newest version of H-65 aircraft. You know, each aircraft has its own unique strengths and limitations, but the Dolphin's a very stable platform, and uh, I, I think it's, it's given some advantages. It's a great helicopter. We have over 100 of them in our arsenal. I think the 65 is a good detection platform uh, for detecting go fast. Uh, it has the legs to keep us in the air and uh, conduct more hours of searching. We can tell it to go on a heading, maintain altitude, maintain this airspeed, and it'll do it. Plus, we can program in uh, different uh, flight profiles, different flight patterns, and it'll fly it for us. So if you have two pilots up front, it's kind of like you have a third pilot up there that can do the, the basic flying. Coast Guard always knew they wanted to use the HH-65 uh, in, in this mission and fly an organic aircraft that, that's in the fleet the pilots are trained on, the aviation maintainers are, are trained to uh, fix and support. And back in 2000, the biggest thing we probably uh, had an upgrade was we have new engines. We replaced our Bravo model engines with, this is a 2C, 2CG, Turbo Mecha, Turbo Powered Shaft engine. Uh, it gives us a lot more power. These engines are rated at 1,053 horsepower, and we actually have more power than the transmission and the head can handle, so we have to downrate the engines, which is a good thing, because if uh, being a dual engine aircraft, if one of the engines uh, goes out on us in flight, we still have plenty of power on the other engine to continue flight, and most important thing, get back to the ship, because when you're uh, 40 miles away from the ship, and you're 100 miles away from some country you don't want to go into, it's really nice feeling to know you can get back to the ship if you need to. The MH-65C has also pioneered some state-of-the-art electronic upgrades to help make it a more effective aircraft for the airborne use of force mission. With most interdictions happening at night, the ability to see in the dark is vital to stopping narco-terrorists. Cover of darkness has always been a, has been a secret of an enemy, and so we have obviously have resources and, at, and pieces of gear on board our aircraft to counteract and try to detect those vessels. One of those is a forward-looking infrared, also commonly referred to as FLIR. There's two different cameras, basically, in, in the FLIR. You have uh, one that's a daytime lens, and then you have a nighttime FLIR, which gives you an infrared picture, uh, obviously, so when it's dark out, you can still pick up uh, a heat picture. Uh, before we make an approach to the vessel, our weapons will be out the door, and we'll place the FLIR on the vessel to determine the number of occupants that we can see, confirm if they're displaying a flag or markings on the vessel uh, to determine nationality of the vessel or uh, also to display whether or not uh, they're smuggling any kind of contraband. We have an operator in the back that uh, enables us to be able to record what we see and uh, we, all, we use those images for case packages when we're prosecuting individuals that we do interdict. But flying at high speeds and low altitudes at night can be extremely dangerous if pilots don't have the right equipment. So these professionals use the most advanced night vision system in the Coast Guard that displays critical flight information directly into their night vision goggles. We fly with uh, heads-up displays on the NVG goggles, which uh, greatly assists us in uh, keeping the aircraft in an upright and uh, out of water condition. The technology having that, that you can know what your altitude is, you know what power you're pulling, and you know where your heading is at, you know how long it's going to take to get somewhere. Um, but specifically, your altitude over the water is vital when you're doing these missions at night. So that capability has, you know, I think greatly increased the safety of our crews. Another critical component to completing this complex mission is the need for cutting-edge radio systems that can immediately communicate with Coast Guard assets all over the world. Coast Guard 6597, Roger, you have permission? The uh, MH-65 Charlie has additional radios and satellite communications capabilities that previous models didn't have. Now with satellite communications, I can be out in the Pacific and I can talk with our controllers, the ship's controllers even, that are in Key West. Coast Guard 6597. Advancements in technology are going to keep coming in the future and, you know, put them right on Hitron Bird and keep going. For Hitron gunners to ever make it into position to take a shot on a go-fast boat, they must deploy with the true workhorse of the Coast Guard, the Cutter. Cutters today play a vital role in projecting the power of the United States all over the world. 
With the addition of an air asset on the cutter, its capability is greatly increased. When we're on patrol, air assets are extremely important because they allow us to significantly increase our detection capability. It significantly increases our ability to see out. We are uh, limited by the distance of our internal sensors. Having a helicopter allows us to project hundreds of miles beyond that so we can cover a vast amount of area in a short amount of time because of the speed and height which an aircraft can uh, attain. But aircrafts aren't the only way that cutters can reach out over the horizon. Each cutter will also deploy with a specialized high-speed craft called the small boat that carries a tactical boarding team to vessels that have been interdicted by Hitron. This is one of the most dangerous jobs in the Coast Guard, so boarding team members deploy heavily armed and, whenever possible, under the watchful eye of a Hitron gunner. Pretty much what you see before you is your typical team consisting of a boarding officer, two to three boarding team members, and our armament being 40 caliber sidearms, standard issue M16, two types of shotguns, one that is primarily used for disabling fire uh, with copper sable slugs, and the other one carrying less than lethal ammunition. The boarding crew plays a vital role in capturing and prosecuting narco-terrorists, but like Hitron gunners, they are just one component in a vast network of professionals working to keep America safe. At any one time, Hitron assets are deployed throughout the South Pacific and Caribbean on cutters waiting for the call that a go-fast has been spotted. But the cutter and air crew are not in this fight alone. Multiple U.S. and foreign agencies are continuously working together to share intelligence and ensure that Hitron gunners have the best possible opportunity for stopping a go-fast. The partnerships that the Coast Guard has made internationally with the countries down there is, is pretty remarkable. During some of these deployments, we got to work with other agencies um, and also liaisons to other countries. We've been getting good intel, and uh, so we've got some pretty good people on the ground uh, in, in the various countries that are they're smuggling the drugs. I've met many of the, uh, of the intelligence and uh, drug enforcement personnel that are down in South America that are trying to get us the intelligence to put us on scene with the, tar with, with the vessels that, we, that we're lurking the interdict. These countries are very willing to work with the Coast Guard, which I think is awesome, you know, to do this drug mission. The amount of coordination involved to actually allow a gunner to take a shot on a narco-terrorist boat is astounding. Multiple factors must come into play, from intelligence to cutter coordination and, of course, the skill to make the shot. Coming up on Modern Sniper Coast Guard. Our mission today is a uh, tactics training flight. It's a laser tag for big kids, just how I like to describe it. That's representing uh, individuals on in the boat that do not want to be stopped. They want to accomplish their mission of getting drugs wherever they're heading. And, uh, of course, we want to stop them. And weapons on the boat. Press, 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 press. The Coast Guard's Helicopter Interdiction Tactical Squadron never stops training for their mission to stop narco-terrorists with precision fire from the air. And today, they are utilizing some of their most dynamic training assets to conduct highly realistic missions on the St. Johns River. A typical training exercise is a series of tactics that we employ. They're designated and rehearsed, and they involve 360s and 180s and variable speeds. The end result is for the, the pilots to be more efficient at providing a stable platform for the aviation gunners and for the aviation gunners to be able to hold a target, a moving target, essentially. To get the most feedback from the tactical training boat exercises, the gunners utilize weapons equipped with special lasers so they can keep track of their hits. It's called Miles Gear, and basically what it is, it's a laser tag for big kids, just how I like to describe it. Aviation gunners have got laser transmitters and their weapons, their inert weapons, and we've got laser receivers on our engines and we simulate disabling fire from the helicopter using them. Basically, we've got detectors on each engine. Um, we've got forward, aft, and on the sides. They shoot a laser, and depending on which laser they hit, it marks up on the, count, on the console there of where they hit it, if they missed it. We also got a flashing uh, light at night. It blinks uh, red when they actually hit us. Before the training exercise can begin, both the helicopter and boat crews conduct safety assessments on the dangers the training operation presents. Our mission today is a uh, tactics training flight. We'll be uh, conducting over the St. Johns River uh, with our tactical training boat. Flight plan is a uh, direct from Cecil out to Doctors Lake and then onto the St. Johns River where we'll meet up with the uh, training boat equipment. We have our uh, training weapons on board. 
Any questions on the uh, mission or the briefing today? Let's have a great flight. Let's go. On a typical training operation, the boat crews will run three very different scenarios. Each replicates situations that would require the gunner to fire his weapons. The scenarios start off routine, but quickly escalate into more dynamic situations. Okay, so the first scenario we're going to do here, um, we're just going to have the boat keep going straight ahead the whole time, and then after that one, uh, we'll be a little bit lighter, and then we'll move into a scenario where the boat can turn and maneuver a lot more. It makes it uh, more realistic for our training. Okay, we have our target. Doors coming open. And if Anthony, if you'll take a close look on the FLIR, we'll help determine uh, how many people are on board and if there's any packages or barrels on board. With the gunner observing the suspect vessel through the FLIR, the Hitron crew begins the first stage of a typical interdiction known as the reconnaissance phase. Um, at this point in the reconnaissance phase, he is gathering all the information um, that we need in order to conduct this interdiction. It has to be a go-fast type vessel. It has to be in international waters outside of territorial seas, underway, making way, suspected of drug smuggling activity. And the last one, and probably the most important, is it has to have no indicia of nationality. I mean, it has no indication of nationality. And uh, those are the things that we can use in order to conduct a right of visit boarding. When we're operating on the high seas, our, our primary job uh, when we approach a vessel uh, that is suspect that we suspect of smuggling is to determine its nationality. We have to have legal jurisdiction and right uh, to stop that vessel. To gain that authority to stop the GoFast, the crew reports the information obtained during the reconnaissance phase to Coast Guard Command and must receive the clearance to interdict, called a Statement of No Objection, or SNO. The gunner setting up the cabin so that he can get the 240 in the door. Bring the 240 yeah, out right. the door. With the 240 ready to fire warning shots, the crew prepares for the second step in the interdiction process, called the signaling phase. The first thing we do is we get our blue light on. It's like the police light. The second thing we do is we call them on the, basically what's an emergency marine band channel. And then the last phase, the last step of the signaling phase is the warning shots. In a dramatic final gesture to convince the go-fast boat to stop, the gunner uses the devastating 240 machine gun to fire warning shots across the bow. But surprisingly, the 240's warning shots are rarely enough to persuade most narco-terrorists to stop the go-fast, and Coast Guard crews must move to the next phase, disabling fire. So they didn't comply, they're non-compliance. We've already received our SNO, statement of no objection, and now the Aviation gunners preparing for disabling fire. This is where we'd actually stop the vessel. See what this is on now, so uh, we'll give it a shot and see if they start registering. Basically, we have like a laser tag system that they know how many shots the gunners put on it here when we're out here just tactically um, training with the boat. We'll typically use two shots, two hits registered as uh, we call it half speed, which would be simulating one engine going out on a go fast. And then two more hits, we would simulate being full stop, which would be all the rest of the engines taken out. So now the vessel stopped. We're going to end game. We're just circling the vessel, keeping our weapon engagement zone on the target. And then we're waiting for our small boat to come from our ship. They're actually going to board the vessel, get the suspected narco terrorist, as we call them, and get the contraband. And then we'll provide boarding team cover when they actually board the vessel. Once the boarding party is on the scene, the Hitron gunner switches to his secondary precision weapon system, the M14. It offers a higher magazine capacity than the M107 and allows for rapid follow-up shots should the Hitron gunner need to protect the boarding team from hostile action. With the warm-up complete, the training tempo increases. The second scenario more closely duplicates the reality of a Hitron interdiction. For this scenario, the boat team begins to implement the aggressive maneuvers of narco-terrorists attempting to avoid being disabled. It's kind of a mild maneuvering, but definitely not in a straight line. That's representing uh, individuals in the boat that do not want to be stopped. They want to accomplish their mission of 
uh, getting drugs wherever they're heading. And uh, of course, we want to stop them. It exponentially increases the difficulty for the gunners and pilots. But this scenario is the very heart of their training. And as the true professionals that they are, the gunner and pilot have no trouble stopping the tactical training boat yet again. The third and final phase of the tactical training boat operation represents the worst case scenario for Hitron crews. What we can do next is a, uh, just for the last scenario, do a three Bravo with a uh, suppress call at the end. The most aggressive scenario that we have is, we call it a three Bravo. And that is speeds varying from zero to 50 knots, using turns from zero to 180 degrees and 360 degree turns. In this scenario, not only does the boat crew utilize evasive maneuvers to make themselves a challenging target, but they simulate hostile action requiring the use of lethal force. Hostile action, uh, we simulate that with, they're called non-guns, they're inert rubber guns. And basically we just point them at the aircraft and they can go into their suppress and disengage maneuvers. Should a narco-terrorist decide to point a weapon at the Hitron helicopter, the target immediately changes from the boat's engines to the boat crew. However, to actually employ deadly force, the situation must meet strict criteria. We use something called weapon opportunity action. It's called the deadly force triangle. The person of interest has to have a weapon of some type. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gun. They have to have the opportunity to use that weapon, and then they have to present the action that's either going to harm someone else or harm us. With a hit indicator beacon blinking, it is clear that had this been a smuggler or a suicidal terrorist boat loaded with explosives, the vessel would have been successfully stopped. The pilot and gunner can walk away from the experience with the knowledge that they are well prepared for a deployment. But laser tag is not a complete substitute for gunnery training. If the gunners and pilots are to truly know that they are proficient with their weapons, they must let the lead fly on real targets. Superb hovering job, sir. A nice shoot back there. Oh, well, you know, we do, we do what we can. <laughs> Coming up on Modern Sniper Coast Guard, the new offshore live fire training. Pirate Sabarco, Pirate Sabarco, stop your vessel, stop your vessel. This is a U.S. Coast Guard on Channel 16. The vessel is still non compliant. Prepare for disabling fire. Roger. When making interdictions on narco terrorist boats, Coast Guard aviation gunners are asked to make one of the most demanding rifle shots imaginable. It takes a tremendous amount of training and dedication to the craft to make such critical shots under the extreme conditions interdictions present. Continuous practice is essential because in the real world, things change fast and there is no room for mistakes. I've been a part of six interdictions. I'd say one of the most memorable interdictions I've had was we get on scene and there's two go fast for us running side by side. And for us, that's like a big deal. I mean, you're lucky to see one, never mind two running side by side. Two boats go in the same direction that both are suspected of drug trafficking. It, it was just a picture that I'll never forget in my head. Uh, on my last interdiction, we came across a vessel. We set up for the interdiction phase, and the vessel came to a stop uh, with just one engine uh, disabled. We didn't know it at the time, but they were actually uh, going to light their vessel on fire. Uh, they were able to put the go fast out, but not after losing a, a lot of the uh, a lot of what turned out to be cocaine on board. You know, when I got the uh, order to commence fire, there was a guy really close to the uh, to the engines, and you know, one of the ways to you know move him away is just to you know shoot directly behind the engines. And when I took that first shot, it was uh, it was very surreal. It was like there's a person. You know, this is this is it. You know, this is what you're training. This is what you train for. A lot of thing with training is as real as you can make the situation, the better it is for us in terms of training. Because no shot is the same shot. So you pretty much have to be prepared for every shot. And again, that's where your training falls back on. Getting the gunners the training they need requires the entire unit to work together seamlessly. The goal is to give the gunners and pilots the chance to fire at an actual boat that is underway. So what we're coming out here today is uh, get our gunners more proficient. This is one of the tools they use. They have the target range on land. Uh, we do a tow boat. The tow boat simulates a go-fast boat uh, that's not in compliance. For their own safety, 
the boat crew lets out 1,000 feet of cord in order to distance themselves from the target boat. They tow it at high speeds through five to eight foot swells in order to make the eventual shot that much more difficult. While the boat team prepares their targets and gets underway, the gunners must prepare their equipment. This is particularly important when setting up the cabin. They must have quick access to all their weapons, but also ensure they are secured safely. With the sea clear, the Hitron helicopter takes off and prepares for some highly realistic training. Before we go on deployment, you know, we're flying with our pilots. We get comfortable with each other. It flows really nicely out there. Once the area has been cleared and the boat crew is safe, the training scenario plays out as an actual mission. The pilots and gunner want to practice every aspect of an interdiction, so they utilize the exact dialogue used during real missions. Okay, I got a suspected target of interest. It is seaward of territorial seas. It is a goat bass type vessel. It's currently at one o'clock. We're staying covert at a thousand feet, making way underway, refusing a lawful order to stop. It does appear to be suspected of drug smuggling activity, and there is no indicia of nationality. As a gunner, we need to be very, our heads, all, it's got to be on a swivel. We got to know what's going on with the boat. We got to know what's going on with the aircraft. We got to know what's going on with our weapons, what's going on with the pilots. If there's a break in communication, then... Requesting an SNO for warning shots up and to, including disabling fire. As the Hitron crew comes across the boat, they try to signal it in order to get it to stop. Fire Sabarco, fire Sabarco, stop your vessel, stop your vessel. This is the U.S. Coast Guard on Channel 1-6. The boat has not responded to calls to stop. Okay, vessel is not stopping. Prepare for warning shots. Roger, ready out for warning shots. Forward 15. Forward 10. Forward 5. Easy forward. Hold position. Come in, sir. Roger, good. Roger, good. Five. One stitch. Two stitch. Three stitch. Warning shots complete. All Roger. target. Stay on target. Going around. Roger. The boat will not stop. The gunner must take out their engine. The vessel is still non-compliant. Prepare for disabling fire. Roger. The live fire training tests every aspect of the gunner's marksmanship skills and demonstrates how challenging firing from an aerial platform onto a moving target truly is. And you're ready aft? Ready aft for disabling fire. With waves moving the target up and down at random intervals, it takes the skill of a well-trained gunner to even have a chance at hitting the target. And I don't have the shot. Left pedal's coming in. Roger. And commence fire. Roger, commence fire. All right, uh, check fire, check fire. Roger, check fire. Amazingly, every single round fired hit the target. This is the type of precision that the gunners trained to achieve and is the reason Hitron has successfully engaged every go-fast boat encountered. And while the outcome is often the same, interdictions are rarely routine. That actual point where all those things come together, all the training, I mean, the, the crazy amount of hours we work, we fly, when that aviation gunner actually puts the bullet into the engine, it's a pretty amazing feeling and you think, you know, you're really, you're making a difference and it's actually all your training and hard work coming to fruition at that point. It's just a, the coolest job and the fact that we get paid to do it every day is, is pretty sweet. See a young guy come back after his first interdiction and to, and to see the look on their face and the, the excitement that comes out uh, from that is probably the best part of my job. It's what's kept me going throughout my career is, is the people, motivation they have, the love of their, their job, their duties getting to see people uh, do something that when I came into the Coast Guard we couldn't do. It's a great time to be in the Coast Guard. But as Hitron continues to maintain its perfect record, the cartels are always looking for ways to defeat Hitron's capabilities. Well, we'll always have to be poised and ready for the, for the next new tactic that the drug smugglers use. They've done a lot of things over the, over the past few years that I've been here at Hitron to, to try to counter us, uh, but uh, we've always been able to find something that will, that will beat their system. I, I think they've shifted the way they've done business, and yet um, we've had a record because we've gotten better at doing what we do. Like snipers from other branches of the armed services, Coast Guard aviation gunners will always adapt to the new challenges their enemy presents and continue to play a critical role in operations long into the future.